Thanks to your generous donations to our Kickstarter funding campaign. Clive Barker Podcast presents Fundraiser 9. Celebrations! Okay, so this is episode 422 of the Clive Barker podcast, and we are returning to Clive Barker's A to Z of horror uh, audio commentaries. We haven't done one of these in a while, uh, not since number 410, yeah. Day, Day of the Dead, which has been a while. I know. It's it's great. We're just going to continue on with uh, honoring Clive's picks for the A through Z of horror book. Yeah. And he, he really enjoys the Romero movies. So we're doing land of the dead today. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, this one came out in 2005 and we've picked the unrated director's cut, which is about four minutes, uh, longer than the theatrical version. Yeah. There's more gore and more stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think a few alternate takes. I think Cholo is meaner to Charlie. Yeah, in in one scene, not a huge amount different. It's a star-studded cast. I mean, we got John Leguizamo, we got Az Argento, <clears throat> yeah, we've got Dennis Hopper, Charlie is Robert Joy, yeah, we got uh, yeah. So it's it's a really uh, fun movie to watch. Although, Although there's it, some really there's some really good kills. There's some really good kills. The interesting part is the main character is like the the least recognizable star out of all of these uh, characters, right? Uh, yeah, Simon yeah. Baker playing yeah. Riley. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He he I don't know. I mean, he's all right. He he's 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 not a bad main character, but but I think some I think the other some of the other ones are a little more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what have I seen him in? I've seen him in The Mentalist, the TV series that used oh, to yeah. play. Uh, I didn't watch all of it, just a couple episodes. The Lodger, I think it was a movie. He didn't do a lot of stuff, right? Mm. I mean, he's got Land of the Dead. I think he's in The Devil Wears <clears throat> Prada. And then mm. he was in yeah. The Mentalist for, for seven years. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, 2008 to 2015. <laughs> and I think now he's got a movie coming up called Limbo, or already yeah. came out, from 2023. And and I think earlier I had said that my copy of Land of the Dead was signed by John Leguizamo. I think I said that a couple of times, but actually... Yeah. Uh, that I sold that copy. I just found out because that was the DVD. So what I have now, the Blu-ray is signed by uh, F- Phil Fondacaro and Tom oh, yeah. and Tom Savini. Wait, so Phil Fondacaro is in Land of the Dead? Yeah, yeah. You'll you he's um he he's uh wearing a cowboy hat and he's like oh, uh, right. ra- wrangling okay. the zombies that are fighting each other uh, to get to uh, Asia Argento. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um we did a we've been debating about whether we should end the Clive Barker's A to Z of horror commentaries with this episode or not. And we did a couple of polls, one on our Facebook uh listeners group and one on Twitter. And we won't we won't go into those now cuz I think it'll be kind of fun to check in on them when the movie's over and then make our decision then if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> I, I did vote on that one. I yeah, gave my I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And um, yeah, and w- so we'll we'll see where where those all kind of uh, where those all kind of fall out at by the end here when we finish the movie, and and we'll kind of make our decision then. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're starting at the kind of at the zero mark. It's um, just before the little uh, logo of uh, the plane flying around the globe. Oh, OK. Yeah. The un- um, universal. Yeah. Or, yeah. OK. Here we go. Uh, you want to count? You do it. OK. Three, two, one. Play. OK. Here we go. I might have to turn mine down. It's up a little loud. I like that they use the old timey logo. Yeah, for Universal, right. And and these opening credits uh, start out in black and white. It's kind of like it's um, it's sort of easing its way from Night of the Living Dead into the present day, which is present day is two thousand five. 
Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Atmosphere pictures and here we go. One interesting point of view from that though is that uh Day of the Dead painted a pretty bleak uh picture as far as like the world population compared to what you get in this one. Well, it's very localized, right? Day of the Dead yeah. is just that one base that's surrounded by um zombies, yeah. but we don't I don't they, think we really understand what's going on with the rest of the world in that no, movie, right? And and they were just making predictions, and they don't really know, right? Yeah. I mean, they're they're cut off from the world. Well, it looks like this. I would say that this <clears throat> land of the dead, this city, is like they gather up in the Golden Triangle of Pittsburgh, where the two rivers meet to form the Ohio River, and yeah. I, it feels like it would be a great place to defend, right? It's got yeah. rivers on both sides, and uh, as long as you got a fence in there it, you'd be you'd be golden yeah uh and it's it's a great place to defend until uh until the zombies are right in there with you as we'll find out yeah yeah and uh you watched this last night right yeah here we are we're getting a montage of zombies killing people eating people knocking down walls yeah one thing that I think has sort of progressed over time uh, with these uh, dead movies of, of George Romero's is the zombies abilities to pull people apart like Taffy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I it's think great. it's become kind of a, a, almost a fantasy element of these movies and well, it's, I it's, mean, it's yeah, tough I've... to watch and it's, it's painful to watch, but it's also a little bit fantastical. Sure. I mean, yeah. you, you want to talk fantasy. The zombie is the most fantastical thing in here. I mean, well, that's you know, true. The, how would they how would they maintain themselves? Like if they're rotting corpses, wouldn't they eventually just rot into nothing? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, well, there's always those being, questions we yeah, could ask. I guess part of rotting is bit lying on the ground and stuff from the ground getting into them, too. I mean, I guess if you're moving around, you're not rotting as fast. Yeah. Is that true? I don't know that that's true. Because what what makes you rot is that the uh, the tissue is dead, and then as soon as like bugs fly all over you and lay eggs on you, and then yeah. bacteria on in the air <clears throat> fall on your skin, and you know you, you just rot anyway. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know as much of it. I love the guy with that uh, musical instrument inside that that band plays. <laughs> yeah. This is just crazy. Like they've been here holding their instruments yeah. all this time. So does he have yeah. air, air in his lungs, you know, to play that tuba? Well, they're bags. Yeah, yeah. there are bags. Yeah. So, but so that, that sort of implies that he can breathe. Well, if they grunt, that means they're expelling air through their throat, right? Yeah. Here comes big daddy. Yeah. And, you know, some of these zombies, they look very decayed and others don't look that decayed, which yeah. is usually the hero zombies like Big Daddy. Yeah. Like, how long has Big Daddy been dead? You know, basically, the makeup on Big Daddy only seems to affect mostly his face. Yeah. And it's just more wrinkly than usual. They wanted him to be able to be more expressive than some yeah. of the other ones that have more uh, more desiccated sort of makeups. I love the um, the the contact lines they put on their eyes they yeah look so cool. um i think the we'll see that as the movie progresses one of the things that uh romero was trying to bring with this movie and it started that concept in uh, day of the dead was that the uh, zombies were kind of evolving a little bit right yeah yeah and and um it's funny when i first read that because i was really looking forward to this movie coming out and they teased a lot about how the zombies were evolving and I totally misunderstood. I thought, oh, they're going to have like bat wings and, you know, f fly around and and uh, uh, have all these superpowers and stuff. And it's like, no, it's just a it's more more like, you know, the way Bub, you know. Yeah, they, they're going to get yeah. organized, right? They, yeah. they start getting a little more organized. They start going yeah. back to the routines that they remembered from their previous life. Yeah. They want to be like a civilization. So we got Riley right here. He's our main you know, protagonist. He's the commander of the Dead Reckoning, which is, is gonna it's gonna be that cool yeah. truck that they have. And this is Charlie. Yeah. I, I've read in certain reviews that it's supposed to be like he's a little mentally challenged. I don't really get that vibe out of it. It just seems like a guy who's a little more insecure than everybody else, but yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know that people people really put him down a lot, like he's uh, like he's um, mentally deficient. And I don't know. I mean, maybe there's one or two lines or something that make him that way. But I I like how they use the the fireworks here to distract the zombies. Yeah, because again, going back to the zombies remembering things from their past life, you know, what happens when what's one of the major things that people gather together to watch yeah. fireworks, right? You know, whenever there's 4th of July fireworks, yeah, those crowds get out there and every single parking place gets taken. And, and it makes sense that the zombies would be looking up, you know, especially what, in a world that's become so quiet. One thing you have to wonder about is, is uh, <clears throat> how do they, how do they make fireworks and especially bullets? They seem to have an infinite supply of bullets. That's a good point. I think they're mostly scavenging things, but I mean, fireworks yeah. are not probably that easy to make with chemicals, yeah. you know? So maybe they could still be making those fireworks, but I'm going to guess because they look like commercial fireworks that they've scavenged those. Yeah. Otherwise it'd just be having like, yeah. you know, and I suppose regular- it- Petards. With a really small amount of people left in the world, there's probably – if you can find bullets, you could probably find a lot of bullets. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially in America, right? Yeah. And here's John Leguizamo playing Cholo. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, he posted a picture of himself as the zombie in Land of the Dead, and he said, I was the first Latino zombie in a Romero <laughs> movie. I, I don't know if that's really true, though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think even in a movie, sure, but I, I don't know if other actors have played zombies in Romero movies and they were Latinos. So, <clears throat> well, I think that there, there had to have been more of them in Dawn of the Dead. There were biker gangs that I think had Latino people. Yeah, but those aren't zombies. I, well, I think they were all killed, and some of them probably turned yeah, into zombies. D- eventually, they become zombies. Sure. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. That. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's a good point. Maybe he's right. Yeah. Maybe we didn't actually see them turn into zombies. I don't understand why Cholo thinks this is going to be his last night. He's just going to join the rich people because yeah. the world is like this now. It's not like, okay, yeah. I'm retiring from zombie hunting. It's uh, no, you, yeah. if you want to survive, everybody needs to put in their part. He's an interesting character though. Cause he's, he's, um, he takes in turns. He's sort of uh, despicable and then and then sympathetic, right? Especially when he's like ignored and double crossed by Kaufman. But, yeah, uh, and he's willing to he's willing to blow up the town. I don't understand why he wants to be upwardly mobile in a society that pretty much is non-existent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. think there's a lot of metaphor to Romero's movies, right? A lot yeah. of like societal commentary, and uh, one of them. Yeah is that, you know, they're still rich people and they have bags of money, even though I don't understand what they would use the money for, right? Yeah, they they, they uh, created a society to try to make people feel comfortable again, I guess. Oh, he's like, wake up, sheeple. They're just trying to distract us. Yeah. He knows. He's seen this happen time and time again. Yeah. I love the cheerleader zombie. Yeah. There she is. There she goes. Yeah. Ouch. It's like, no, my buddies are being killed. I don't uh I don't know that it would be practical for them to just go on a bike in the middle of the zombies. It feels like it yeah. would be too risky, right? Yeah. Oh, hold the head totally. of the zombie. Did you see that? If you had a choice of being on a motorcycle or being in dead reckoning, I'd totally pick dead reckoning. Yeah. Or yeah. even just a car, a regular car. Yeah. Oh, the poor zombie man. Yeah, and and he actually f- understands suffering enough to like want to stomp on his head. Yeah, and it's like, well, here we go, smush. Yeah. This movie, uh, its working title was Dead Reckoning, and it was going to be called Dead Reckoning for a long time until they've eventually changed the name to Land of the Dead. Yeah. Um, looking at the IMDb page, uh, I read something here that said that, uh, I think Fox was trying to get him to call it night of the living dead, right? Night of the living dead, dead reckoning. And then I think what turns out was that Fox just was trying to get the rights to the night of the living dead franchise. And so I think that's when, uh, Romero went to a different studio. Yeah. 
Of course, the, these uh, wonderful special effects are Greg Nicotero and Howard Berger from Canby. Mm-hmm. Greg Nicotero was always uh, a big fan of George Romero. Yeah. I think they met in a restaurant in Rome when Greg Nicotero was with his parents or something. And he said, yeah. like, hey, you're George Romero. I want to make movies. I want to do zombies for you. <laughs> yeah. And there we go. Well, and then, of course, he went on to do Walking Dead, and his zombies look, like, identical to what you see in this movie. It's really good. Yeah. These are the slow zombies still. Uh, Romero zombies are kind of slow. Yeah. But, I mean, look at that truck. That truck is like, uh, it looks like something that you see, like, in, in a military operation, right? Yeah. Like... There's a Roger Zelazny story called Damnation Alley. I think it's a movie in the 70s, too, where there's a, a, a truck that's just like Dead Reckoning. You know, it's a post-apocalyptic kind of a, a movie novel. A lot, a lot of those zombies are just being shot to the body, and yeah. I don't think that that would do anything to um, <clears throat> keep them down. No, no, it wouldn't. As- at least in universe with Romero, right? You have to destroy right. the brain. Yeah. It might knock them down, though, enough for them to get by. But I agree with you that it seems like they're wasting a lot of ammunition here. Yeah. yeah. But that truck has, like, missiles and... Yeah. That's crazy. I wonder who made that uh, that truck, who constructed that truck. Uh, and... I Riley did. No, I mean for the movie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Good yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't I, have to be real missiles. It yeah. could just be made out of cardboard for the shot. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's someone had to like grab an actual truck and then just modify that and put all that stuff on top of yeah. it. It looks amazing. It looks realistic. Yeah. Well, and here's the beginning of where we're supposed to go. Oh, Cholo's the bad guy. Right. Because he, you know, he he put the, these people's lives at risk and got this young guy killed uh, just for some booze. Yeah, it seems like human life has lost kind of its value, right? Right, and it when, should be more valuable because there's so li- little of it left. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, these people see people die every day. So yeah. at some point they're like, well, you know, better him than me, right? And, oh! Well, and, yeah. Well, and, and Cholo even is in charge of the the garbage, which you find out is uh, everybody that Kaufman doesn't like ends up in the garbage. Yeah, he's like the strong man. Yeah. The fixer. Um, I think he's supposed to be like the employee of the. Oh, look at this one. There we go. He's got that weird harpoon thing, Cholo. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like that, a that hand a crossbow. Show. It does seem like this is a movie that uses that looks like, um, you know, when when you see the blood spatters that are digital. This, yeah. this looks like digital blood spatters, doesn't it? I think sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. like what they did in in um, oh God, what is that uh, that Barker movie that the that where they they ran out of blood, so they had to start using CGI blood. Um, oh, was it the Book of Blood? No, the um, the one after that. I don't know why I can't think of it. Midnight Meat Train. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not because they wanted to; they just ran out of yeah. Chomp. Oh, jeez. Oh, I know. It's like the security guard for the for the supermarket. Look at that. Just the way that he yeah. rises, it's so, it's so good. He's like pulling himself up. Yeah. And this is another case where we never get to find out, you know, if he might have survived if they'd amputated it because he, he, they don't give us a chance. Well, yeah, you're right. But I think that he's... He's like, well, I don't want to uh, have to deal with that. So yeah. he just chooses to finish himself. Yeah. Also, I don't know how much medical um, medical supplies they would have at the city to be able to amputate a limb like that. Yeah. Well, To be honest, is- every time someone gets bit, you just know that they're done for, right? Well, and, and it's interesting also that they say um, in this movie, they say you know, people don't last more more than like an hour. In yeah, Dawn of the it, Dead, it was like three days. Yeah, in Dawn of the Dead, that guy also gets the arm amputated, but we never get to see if he was going to make it or not. It didn't seem like No, it. no, it that was like Day was of the Dead worse. where he got his arm amputated. In Dawn of the Dead... 
Yes, Day of he, the Dead. In Dawn of the Dead, he got bitten, and then he's lying on a bed for three days before he died. Yeah, yeah. So I think that over the course of time, you know, the, these things are more rotten, and they, their infection is worse and worse, and just kills people faster. I, I'm not surprised that some of these guys drop like flies, because just look at what they're doing. They're just yeah. like doing donuts in the middle of the road, in yeah. the middle of the zombies. Uh yeah. You got what you wanted, just go back to the city. Yeah. What are you doing? And yeah, some and of the, and one of them even lost his gun to Big Daddy. It's like, what are you doing? People are so overconfident. I mean, yeah. in uh in Day of the Dead, they weren't overconfident like this. I feel like they got like this vibe of like, oh, fuck it, man, it's the end of the world, you know. Anything yeah. goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, who wants to live forever? Yeah, they even put put zombies in an arena inside the city and to make them fight each other and take pictures with them and stuff. It does get a little unhinged in those things. Yeah. yeah. That looks like a fantasy gun, right? That's not any kind of real gun that I know about. I don't know anything about guns. I don't either, but I don't think that's a real gun. Oh, he's decided, you know what? I'll follow them. I'll see where they're coming from. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And, and then Michael it, Jackson comes out and starts dancing. Yeah. It's interesting to uh, to think about it, how many other zombies might end, have ended up like him, you know, in the future, I guess. But I guess like, uh, if they make Twilight of the Dead, maybe we'll find out. Yeah. Oh, this is such a good shot. With all the sparks and the wind blowing. Yeah. That's a dead reckoning. You get a really good look at it here. Yeah. It's huge. It's even got like a one of those extender things like a city bus. Yeah, maybe it is a city bus. Who knows? Yeah. Yep, there's another body. Yeah, I you know, I mean this is um oh he had a a a rabbit's paw. Did you see that? Oh yeah. On his card. So they got security cards for some reason. Right, maybe to give them access to different places in the... Ah, yeah. That's a good point. Fiddler's Green. So, it's supposed to be Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. I wonder if that building is real. I've never been to Chicago. Uh, Pittsburgh, sorry. I haven't been to Pittsburgh either. Or fully stocked shopping mall. So, I mean, eventually I imagine that they would have to keep going in a wider radius every time they go out to scavenge for food and items like that, because I don't, we never get to see exactly how many people live in here, but uh, yeah, I mean, it feels like at some point it would just become impractical, impracticable for them to go out and scavenge because everything would be used up. Right. Yeah. So they'd have to go wider and wider farther out. At that point, at some point, it has to be like, maybe it's better to just move the city to another place. But yeah. then you have to deal with the zombies, I guess. Yeah. I don't know why Cholo thinks he's just going to yeah. waltz in there and uh, have a little place in the tower with yeah. the rich people. He's he just, obviously just being used. He didn't do his research, apparently. He just thought, well, that's how much this is how much it costs, and I, this is how much I need to save, and that's it. Yeah. He didn't even know that they had a, a like a board of directors or whatever that or a, a an acceptance committee or whatever they call it. And Riley is just bringing grounding him a little bit, saying, you know, they're not gonna let you in there or me. We're the yeah. wrong kind. Yeah. You know? Not rich. And yeah. you're not white uh, or, you know, whatever. Essential supplies. That's just booze, man. Um, did you know that uh, Dennis Hopper, he was a really wild one. He once did a trick called the Dynamite Death Chair Act. I think it's called the Russian Dynamite Death Chair Act. He... Um, he gathered up a bunch of friends and he did this trick where he sits in a chair and there's six sticks of dynamite pointed outwards from the chair. And then that blows and creates a vacuum where the guy is in the middle and he comes out of it and he's fine. And uh, there's a video uh, of this on YouTube. That's terrifying. 
I know. I think I'll, I'll find that video and put it on the show notes. That guy Whoa. was a wild one. Is he still alive? Dennis no, Hopper? no. No, Dennis Hopper died years ago. Oh. Not from the dynamite, though. Yeah. <laughs> when did he die? Let's see. Dennis Hopper. Yeah, he died in 2010. Oh, okay. Just five years after this movie. And there's no reports whether or not he came back as a zombie. Right. Seems to be an economy that, you know, they seem to have fortify the place. Yeah. But of course, you know, once you put everybody in a place that's got a fence, then you basically just turn everybody into prisoners and whoever has the guns are the wardens. Yeah. They might say they're defending you, but, you know, you're kind of like barricaded yeah. there and it's not easy to get in or out. Yeah. It seems like, you know, they've got a new person there so they can explain the perimeter to us, to the audience. And I think they also have Charlie, who is, they say is, you know, mentally deficient so that they can also explain stuff like the, you know, the sky flowers to us. Look at how many bullets she fires at him. I know. What a waste. She, she fires like 30 bullets at him and he's standing in one place. She just needed one bullet or even just <laughs> zero bullets. Yeah, just let him like burn himself. He's like yeah. burning anyway. Yeah. It's it's more it's more uh it's more dynamic for the movie, I guess. Yeah. My question is who would be having kids? Like looks like that kid guy's a teenager. Yeah. Like who's having kids in this world? That's yeah. crazy. Imagine growing yeah. up in a world like this with all the zombies. Yeah. What do you have to look forward to? I don't know. Mulligan. But I don't know if, but if this, uh, if this has been going on since 1967, then all of these people were were born almost born in the under this. Oh yeah, uh, you know I think the chronology for those movies is a little weird, and uh, right, I don't think we need to look too closely at 1967. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They had color TVs on the in the walls and stuff. Yeah. There you go. He's like coming over to. Uh... It's so bad that Kaufman has a black butler that seems like a racist stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, and Kaufman is openly racist. Yeah. And even though they live in the tower, I mean, look at this. Somehow that woman got bit, right? That person yeah. got bit. No, he didn't. Right. Oh. He 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 hung himself and just being dead made him turn into a zombie. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. So it seems like in this universe, I think we've brought this up before in yeah. other movies, but it's like everybody's got the thing, right? Once you die, it's more of a supernatural thing. Once you die, you come yeah. back. Yeah. Because once uh Yeah, and, and getting hell bit, is full, getting bitten the, makes you makes you die. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this death is a great equalizer. Um, yeah. It's just showing that even the rich are not immune to either being killed by zombies or just being sick of it all. Yeah, I mean, she knows. It's going to turn. Stupid kid. Oh, there he is. Uh, oh, there we go. I mean, lady, you've been living this life for like years. You know what the zombies yeah, are going to do. But these rich people are super insulated from. Yeah, they always think like, no, we're we're not like them. Yeah. Oh no! Bonk! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Blood is coming out. Yeah. That head is smushed. Smush. There you go. One more time for good measure. Not much of a security guard, that dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy is going to have to take care of the kid. Yeah. 
And he puts well, the skull. Well, if he got, down. did he get bitten or maybe he got scratched? Oh, he got bitten his neck. You can see yeah. the gaping wound in his neck. Yeah. yeah. He's done for. Yeah. Oh, someone took the car. Yeah. Because he wants to leave, right? He wants to. Yeah. He wants to take off, get out of the city. Yeah. I wonder how the rest of the world would be like. Um, more zombies would exist in the cities, right? Because that's yeah. the biggest concentration of people. Right. So why do people want to live in cities that are full of zombies? Oh, that guy. He looks like Bub, by the way. Because that's also where all the resources would be. Ah, that's true. But, hey, we still – we could still do farming and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I just don't know if we would have, like, waves of zombies roaming the countryside like in The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah. The hordes. I'm, you're right. Yeah. I mean, how many of them could still be a, around after a certain amount of time? Because the movies do tend to show us that the zombies would uh, circulate around the places that they knew, like the mall and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, this is where we're going to see Asia Argento, I think. Yeah. Of course, people will be betting on yeah. zombies. So I guess one one issue with this movie is that there are only two women in it, and one of them's a prostitute, and the other one is a kind of a backstabber. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you just saw we just saw a pair of titties back there, <laughs> yeah. gratuitously, right? And the, there's another scene where someone is yeah. changing, and they have to s strip down to their bra and they yeah. show it to the camera, which is kind of a step backwards for the for the dead franchise. Because uh, previously the the female characters were pretty hey! you know, pretty strong characters. There Chief he is on the car. Oh, yeah. He looks like a pimp in this one. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it, it, it's weird that you see this this place with. Uh, where people are cheering for like zombies eating someone, you'd imagine yeah. that they all lost someone at some point or another. Yeah. So this seems a little unhinged. One of those things in this society yeah. that seems a little kind of yeah. Yeah, she's she's fighting in the cage. Yeah. Asi Argento, huge crush on her back when this movie was coming out. Yeah, I mean, she just she's she's a great uh, she makes a great character too. Interesting choice of music for this one. Yeah. Like yeah, but I think I think you're right. Bit. I mean, for these the the people who live here at the ground level, you'd think that they would have seen enough horror and violence yeah, and stuff yeah. that there's this like would young, be. There's even young people there, and they're like cheering. There's a woman yeah. cheering that another woman's getting eaten by zombies, and yeah. Oh, he was trying to get Charlie. Yeah. Then there goes Phil on the car. Not yet. Okay. Oh, he had a, a, a vest. Yes. Who cares about your suit, dude? There we go. Bam. Get him, Charlie. Nah, he ran away. Yeah. He's small, but he's fast. So what is that thing that he does? I've seen that in other movies, like people like licking their finger he, and touching he, the... He explains it in the movie. Somebody asks him about it. He says it catches oh. the light. Oh, I see. Okay. There's a lot of hunting in Alaska, right? Yeah. Do you ever go hunting? No. Or just fishing? Yeah, just fishing. I'm not big on hunting. I don't really like yeah. killing stuff. Right, right. Yeah. All right, party's over. There we go. Doesn't hurt that she's hot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Yep. Uh, so it looks like it says here, trivia on IMDb says this was partly based on the original much longer script for Day of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. I think we brought this up when we were doing Day of the Dead, right? Yeah, we said something about the, the original a lot idea. Of the stuff that's in this movie was stuff from the Day of the Dead. Yeah, she's like Kaufman. Kaufman had her thrown to the zombies. Yeah. And Mulligan's going to get in trouble because he's trying to rile up the poor people against the rich people. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of clear that once you have a society where um, there's too much of a gap between the higher ups and the lower classes, that society is kind of doomed eventually. Yeah. There's a huge disconnect in this. Like everybody's living in their little tower. That's what I don't understand. It's like they're living in their tower wearing their fur coats and suits and whatever. Why are you putting on a suit? 90% yeah. of the world is dead. Yeah. You're surrounded by zombies. You live in a pigsty yeah. around your building. It's like why are you walking around in a suit? What what yeah. a purpose is that serving um, yeah. to deal with the situation? That's just denial. <laughs> exactly. Denial and privilege, like, oh, I don't want to, you know, have to give up my lifestyle. You're going to join the army when? Before the zombies hit? You're like 20-something, lady. Hmm. That's why I say the chronology is really messed up. Like, yeah. when was the events of Night of the Living Dead? How long ago was yeah. that, right? Yeah, or or maybe Night of the Living Dead, maybe the apocalypse didn't happen right away. Maybe, you know, people won for a while or who knows. Maybe society was able to come back together and then it didn't. Oh, Mulligan did get arrested. Yeah, because he's riling up the masses. Yeah. This is about uh, business as usual. Uh, versus the great unwashed masses. Yeah. It's funny that the first zombies we see in the movie are also the most prominent ones here. Yeah. Is that guy supposed to be a butcher? Yeah, he's a butcher. I really wanted to come and be a zombie in this movie, but I couldn't afford to fly away and, you know, to do this. Oh, that would have been so cool. Yeah. It's like, hey, you, you got a butcher knife. Yeah. Here, try swinging at this. Yeah, put this here. Jump. There we go. Yeah, see, he's kind of directing them. Yeah. Good job. Of course, how long would he be holding that knife, right? I mean, has he been holding that knife ever since he died? Yeah. Oh. Oh, those zombies are hanging there just as kind of warning for the other zombies and target practice. Yeah. It's like, look what they're doing to my people. And there's the city in the background. Man, look at this penthouse. I know. You got a great view of the apocalypse from up there. Yeah. He's just sitting there like a like a James Bond villain. I know, with his back to the little champers. Yeah. It's like, what is this guy buttering me up for? Also, yeah. he's pouring champagne in whiskey glasses. Whoa, 20 grand, huh? In a world where there's no banks, there's no, like, yeah, guarantee of the currency. I mean, how does that even work? Oh, yeah. 
There we go. He's got the money, but he doesn't have the right skin color. John Leguizamo has become very uh, vocal late, lately about a representation for Latino actors and Latino yeah. characters. Yeah. Oh, he's mad. Well, now you've just become a loose end. Yeah. He doesn't understand yeah. how expendable he is. Yeah, I mean, and if he was going to get rid of him, he should have had like 10 guys come and collect him, not just this one doofus. Yeah, right. And I mean, he's got these guys. They're like his guys. What does he need him for? He could just yeah. grab one of those like security guards and say, hey, I need some, I need you to clean up something for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, damn. And even his uniform with the security kind of looks a little bit like a Nazi uniform. He's got yeah. the armband and oh, the. Yeah. Boom. See, like this guy was getting ready to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, that's why he needed oh. like five, ten guys, not just that one. It always hurts to see someone do a headbutt like that and then not even flinch. Yeah. Oh, did you see the little Muppet uh, puppet theater inside <laughs> yeah. of an empty TV? Yeah. Classic. That dude's got a skateboard. Yeah. I guess yeah, so he can skateboard around all the people and junk. Yeah. That kid with the skateboard really gets it later. Wait, how are they like shooting at an inflatable and it's not going down? Oh, because it's one of those like um, one of those ones that you see like at a car lot oh. or whatever. So it's just the got a, a fan under underneath of it blowing it up. I see. He's got a requisition for the dead. Re he's he's pretending like he's got a requisition for the dead reckoning. Yeah. He said this is from yesterday, and then he was about to shoot him. Yeah, because he's gonna he's getting ready to like you know blow things up, right? He's yeah. like, well, if you don't give me my money, and if you don't give me my apartment, I'm yeah. gonna blow up the city. And then yeah. it's like, okay, but Cholo, wow. think about it, man. That's not. That's not a viable plan. You blow up the city. Where? What are you going to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, and kill a bunch of innocent people. Ah, here it comes. So it's okay. like it's 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 complicated because it's you want to feel feel bad for him, but he's also like he wants to be a mass murderer, just because he doesn't get what he wants. Yeah, he's definitely not a, a hero. Yeah. In any way. Yeah, he's kind of a. The only reason he's sympathetic is because of he's being double crossed. Yeah. Well, yeah, and 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 he's a victim in a in a class uh, kind of a prejudice prejudicial system. And in this movie, they don't use the Z word, right? They use the stenches. Uh, they do one time. Kaufman says, okay. "Zombies, man, they creep me out." Ah. Uh. Understatement of the year. Yeah. That's a uh, pretty boy. Why did that yeah. guy zip line down there? If he just stayed up <laughs> in his tower, he would have been fine. Yeah. Well, weren't they about to knock it down or something? I don't know. He probably would have stood a better chance if still, though. Hey, Big Daddy found out See what that? happens when you pull the trigger. Does that look like a real gun? It looks it looks fantastic, doesn't it? It looks yeah. a little too futuristic. Yeah. Uh-oh, we're all in trouble here. Oh, was that Greg Nicotero? Oh, I don't know. Almost looked like him. Maybe it is. This guy is eating a Ugh. finger. Jump. So, you know, I mean, it looks like when you get like 10 zombies to a guy just eating and mauling him, that 
most of these zombies look pretty intact. They just look like they're rotting away, but yeah, we should see more zombies that are missing like chunks, right? That's because true. Yeah. You have if, to be bitten by zombies to, to die and turn into a zombie. So yeah, you know, well, I mean, you don't, would, you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, you don't, that's, there's lots of other ways to die. With interest, five million. What do yeah. you want five million dollars for? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I want five million dollars that I can't spend in your society that I'm not a, that I'm ostracized from. Yeah, I, I, am I crazy? Or in Day of the Dead, they say something like ninety percent of the world died. Yeah, well, they think so, but yeah. they don't really know. I guess is this a world now where money still exists, or does it only exist in Fiddler's Green? I think it probably only exists in closed communities where people yeah. give it that value because it's yeah. basically just worthless paper, right? right. I mean, in there's Dawn no of the Dead, they were just to... throwing it around and and playing with it, but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't treat it seriously. Oh, this guy says we don't negotiate with terrorists. Yeah. Why does he seems to have a big collection of clocks in his penthouse? Yeah. Have you noticed that? I mean, it's uh, this came out. I think the resurgence of of these zombie movies, and especially Romero, happened because we had other movies come out that did pretty good, like uh, Twenty Eight Days Later, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe the year before, uh, two thousand four, was the Dawn Simon of, Pegg and the Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah, was, and was, Simon Pegg with yeah, um, Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So that brought George Romero back to the zombie movies. Yeah. I uh, designed it. Yeah. Hmm. My truck. Sure. That's got a good point there. It's like, yeah. well, you know how it operates and you know how the machine works and you yeah. know how the guy is. So it's still like from from Kaufman's point of view, he's taking a huge gamble. I mean, how does he know that this is going to work? Well, obviously, I mean, this part where he's talking about the car, I mean, clearly it's like nobody leaves without him saying so. Right. Yeah. Nobody's going to have a better life out there when I can control them in here. Yeah. Because he needs all the people that live in that city below him to prop him up. Yeah. Well, and it was obviously Kaufman who got rid of his car because he didn't want him leaving. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Midnight. Let's see what, uh, what, what Roger Ebert said about this movie. Hmm. Oh, boy. Roger Ebert hates all horror movies, doesn't he? Well, I'm looking at a, the review that he did for this uh, from June 23rd, 2005, and it, it looks like he gave it three stars. Okay. It says, the, the most intriguing single shot in Land of the Dead is a commercial for Fiddler's Green showing tanned and smiling residents dressed in elegant leisure wear, living the good life. Uh, they look like white-haired, eternally youthful golfers in ads for retirement paradises. Shot is intriguing for two reasons. One, why does Fiddler's Green need to advertise <laughs> when it is full <laughs> and people are literally dying to get in? And two, what is going on through the minds of its residents as they relax in luxury, sip drinks, shop in designer stores, and live the good life? Don't they know the world outside is one of unremitting conflict and misery? That was – wasn't that ad from before the zombie thing happened? It could be. That's what I thought. Hmm. Good point. He calls uh, Ebert calls Dennis Kaufman the Donald Trump of Fiddler's Green, which is kind of, <laughs> kind of an interesting uh, yeah. description there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says the movie never explains how money works in this economy, where possessions possessions are acquired by looting and retained by force. 
Or how do the residents of Fiddler's Green earn a living? Do they spend all day in their casual wear, flashing white teeth as they perch on the arms of each other's chairs? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. That's that's right. when we only the know metaphorical how, aspect comes in. We only in, know right? how the people on the lower levels make their make their livings. Scavenging yeah. and street walking and um, running gambling casinos and things, I guess. Yeah, which is like who has the disposable income to spend it at a casino? Yeah. It's, I don't know, man. There's there's some things about this land of the dead that don't make a lot of sense to me yeah. when you look at it too closely. But when it comes to the action, the effects, and even yeah. some of the characters, it really works for me. Yeah. The action part is amazing. It's flawless. Yeah. He just needs one. Jesus. God damn. Uh, That's harsh. So one time uh, at Silicon Valley, a bunch of billionaires uh, hired a guy to do a, give them a lecture about what would be their options once the event happens. And it's like the collab- collapse of society. So – and I, I'm I'm kind of drawing a blank on the name of that guy, but he's a writer. And he made a blog article saying he was in a room with a bunch of billionaires and they were asking him questions like, how can I guarantee that my security forces uh, won't turn on me? You know, and they were discussing things like withholding food or rationing food to the security so they wouldn't turn on yeah. them or even putting shock collars on people. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point because yeah. at the end of the day, a billionaire is just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Especially if he's an old man. I mean, in the world where it seems like looting and force and violence are the defining um, uh, propellers of power, um, how would Dennis Hopper be able to maintain all a big security force like a little private army? It would be that or or even better would be cooperation, right? But yeah, yeah. Well, I'm 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 referring to this particular like privileged class, right? Yeah, like yeah. with a military force, and it's like, what would keep those guys, security guards with guns, from walking into the penthouse and pointing a gun at Dennis Hopper's head and said, "Hey, we're taking over this penthouse." Boom. Yeah. You know, and whatever money he has, it's got to be in Fiddler's Green. It's like yeah. it's not like there's banks or he's not paying them with digital like Venmo payments, right? So yeah. it's like at the end of the day, it's like. Why would rich people be able to oppress people once the society has collapsed like this? It it would be pointless. Any guy with a gun would just yeah. come over to him and be like, well, I got a gun so I can kill you and take your stuff. He just said the line that zombies creep him out. Yeah. <sighs> Bless you. Thanks. Um, no. Yeah. I don't know. It's not explained uh, in this movie. Yeah, it's just to to give that criticism about the one percent and the elite that always yeah. tries to, you know, promise people with yeah. shiny things and promise well, the oh you too can be rich one day. Oh yeah, but it's I like, mean no, and it's even it's even physically represented right with a a tower that you know they can they yeah. they can stratify themselves in. Exactly. Yeah. Good yeah. point. They're they're up there in the top floor. Yeah. You know? Well, and then this is interesting too. Pillsbury here says he's from Samoa, and he talks and he gives these statistics about how many cars in Samoa are stolen. And it's like, okay, well, if there was a zombie apocalypse, and you're talking about growing up in Samoa, like, how did you get over to America in the middle of all of this? Fifty cars in Samoa stolen every year. Yeah. <laughs> Again, don't look too close at this because yeah. you know it starts falling apart. Yeah. I don't know if it could say falls apart or if it's just it, – it's just – um. It, it's where that metaphor aspect comes into it. I know I keep yeah. bringing this up, but – Yeah. Well, yeah. it's also like the Mad Max movies. I love them, but they also kind of drive me crazy because it you it's really hard to put them together into a long nar- narrative. Oof. You got – 
the gyro captain who died in the one movie and then he's back again in the next movie? Yeah. It's like, what's up with that? Or, or, um, his car, you know, blows up in one movie and then he's got it again in the next one. Sure. I mean, I guess they're just hoping that people won't, you know, think too hard about that. Yeah. And, uh, that zombie behind Asia Argento. Oh, look, they did that thing. It's like, I'm pretty sure they could have seen that that did not have a body attached to it. Yeah. But, you know, you get those moments where it's like the camera doesn't see it. It must not be there until they turn around and it's right behind you. You would have noticed he was there. Oh. Oh, damn. Mm, Chomp. Bam. And you see some of these guys, they die and they immediately turn into like those flaky, white, crusty zombies. Right. Yeah. They didn't get torn into pieces. Oh, look, they're just eating all that stuff in the dark. That is so cool. Like another question is like, do zombies... Are zombies blind? Can they see? Do they guide themselves by smell? Because when you die, one of the first things that dries out and disappears are your eyes. Yeah. Oh, he was just pulling like the tongue through the mouth. Nom, nom. What uh, do you know? What the movie follows this one in the Dead trilogy, the Dead series? Uh, I think. Let's see. There's survival and there's diary, and I think diary is next, and then survival. Okay. They're both um, direct to video, and I oh, and no, they, she they got... came out like one after the other, and I can't remember for sure, but. Yeah. And they're oh, also like. I think I think they're also like found footage like on camcorders or something. Is that like the Diary of the Dead? Yeah, Diary of the Dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see it, but I've seen bits and pieces of it in the trailer. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have a head. Oh. Oh, that was that was original. Yeah. Bam. Like it looked like they didn't have a head, but then it just kind of swings it to the front. It's yeah. like Yeah. <laughs> Original zombie, man. I never saw anything like yeah. that. Come on, Marty. We got to go back to the future. Yeah. I got to reach 88 miles an hour. I like Pillsbury. Is that the Samoan? Yeah. <laughs> man, what, what do they got to call him Pillsbury? Because he's fat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and so the, the um, Asia Argento's character, her name is Slack. Slack. But nobody ever says her name, as far as I know. We, I only just got it from the credits. The credits, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and See, the, the this other woman that's with him, her name is Motown, the one that wants to, you know. With the pigtails or whatever. Yeah. That, yeah. She's like, operates uh, the weapons and the dead No, no, no. The one that's in the Jeep with him right now. The, the, oh, yeah. The her, one that's yeah. there with Pillsbury. Right. And right, then she right. wants to she wants to turn on him. Yeah. Her name is Motown. Looks like this uh, this movie was filmed mostly in Canada, yeah. Toronto, Brampton, Mississauga, and Ontario, and then they also did, of course, Pittsburgh for probably the the city. Yeah. Damn, that was cold hearted. Yeah. Slack. Yeah. Um, and then they also shot some stock footage. Uh, they used some stock footage that was shot in Evans City, Pennsylvania, but I, that's just stock footage. He's stopping the time because it's getting close to midnight. I think it's just because people are getting worried. Yeah. Why would you put a tie on? Yeah. All the others can be replaced by others. Yeah.
Yeah, those people are not going to take kindly to being replaced or yeah. abandoned. Oh, did you put them up yourself? Paid who? Yeah. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> yeah. It was great to see. I saw this movie in the theater and it was great to yeah, see uh, Romero get back to the, the zombie genre. Yeah. Yeah. He was like 80 or 80 or 90 or something when this, when he made this movie. You're kidding. Really? Yeah. He was really old. Let me see. So he was born in. Let me do a quick math here. Looks like he was born in 1940. So this movie was made. 40 was, to 2005. So he was 65. Oh. Oh. Okay. Not as old. Yeah. But then when he died, he, you know, was. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but he died 2017, so he was 70, 77? Oh. Yeah. Okay. I just got off of work 10 minutes ago. I had to work Saturday, so my brain is mush. Yeah. I don't like working Saturdays. Yeah. You never get proper enjoyment out of the weekend if you don't have Saturday. Yeah. This movie got some good critics. Uh, like I said, Robert Roger Ebert gave it a five. I think he got a good... You said he gave it a three. Three, three. Yes, yeah. three out of five. Sorry. Um, looks like it did okay. It made twice as much as what they spent in it. Yep. This was the first movie in the series to receive an MPAA rating for its theatrical release. Yeah. So it looks like there were those two versions. We're watching the unrated director's cut. Yeah. There was an R-rated cut for the theaters and then un and an unrated yeah, cut for you the guys, second DVD you release. You guys were arguing with me last time that Dawn of the Dead and, and Day of the Dead were rated. And I said, no, they were both unrated and Night of the mm -hmm. Living Dead. They were all unrated. You are right. This movie, I think, was banned in Ukraine or something. I'm oh. not sure why. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Well, wait, why does he have headphones on if you're trying to listen to the zombies? Yeah, it's stupid. There we go. Oh, it's a kid. It's a zombie kid. Oh, zombie clown. Yeah. Hey, there you go. I probably shouldn't have been scooting around on a skateboard with headphones on. I know. Choke on them. Although, with that many zombies surrounding his building, I don't know how he would have survived anyway. I've seen that before. Zombies, like, taking someone's guts. Yeah. I don't understand why zombies would just stand there by the water and not actually just keep on walking. Maybe it's because we are they're, naturally afraid of the water. Yeah, I think they're afraid. That's then, why that's why the um in the green it was a natural barrier for them. Wow. Also, look at that tower is all lit up. Where yeah. are they getting all the power for that? Yeah. You can't just do that with a bunch of generators. Well, and if they did, they would have to have gasoline. Big Daddy. Yeah. Discovering that he can just walk underwater. I think when they all come up out of the water, it, um, 
a little bit later on. It's a really cool looking optical effect. Yeah, they used that for the poster, didn't they? Yeah. I don't even know what kind of missiles they are. I don't either. Or where would they keep restocking those giant missiles? <laughs> yeah. They... I, yeah. Probably when, someone listening to this they... is going like, I just want to enjoy the movie and you guys are destroying the movie. <laughs> How often would they need to use missiles like that against zombies? Hey, Jose, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, you're cut out for a second. I accidentally pulled the pulled on the the cable. And, oh, okay. uh, sorry about that. Here, here it is. Here they come out of the water. Yeah. Yeah, because I think there's probably like a good ten of them that are really coming up out of the water, but then you see a whole bunch more behind them that I think is an optical effect. Yeah. That's the butcher, and there's the other guy. And that lady with their jaw sticking out. Yeah. Oh, here it is. When they all start coming out. Yeah. Nice. It seems like a big flaw, design flaw, and not thinking that zombies might end up falling on the water and floating over to the other side. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, here, all those zombies coming up out of the water. That's so cool. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of hubris in the, with Kaufman and the, all the rich people. Oh, they would leave in a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Go that, that, down the Ohio River until yeah. you hit Cleveland. Uh, no, not Cleveland. Yeah, I, am, I, I, I can't down. imagine. I, I'm curious where he would have gone if he actually had another place to go to. I think he would probably, his plan was to take as much money as he had, as much valuables, uh, bring some of his security force and some of the other rich guys, and then find another community that he could like manipulate into saying, "Hey, I'm here to save you guys. I got money. Look, yeah. we'll just develop a thing." And yeah, you no know, gratuitous shot of two lesbians here. Yeah. Yeah. The infestation begins. It makes you wonder what would be the end game for this evolving zombie kind of philosophy that George Romero was trying to do. Yeah. And maybe I'll find more answers to that if we do the other uh, couple of movies. But it's uh, what kind of uh, – would it be like a Omega Man kind of thing? Would they right. eventually have a hierarchy of roles? Would they be like a community of – would they find their own way to communicate? Um Looks like they already do that a little bit in this movie. Yeah, I don't know because they would still they'd still want to eat people, and they still yeah. don't. They don't, but they, they eat people, but they don't need to. Yeah, that's a, that was what I was going to ask later. Do they need to? Why do yeah. they eat people? It's, well, so that's part yeah. of the mystery, right? Frankenstein said they don't need to. That they take no nourishment. It's just a, an instinct that makes them do it. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, all the zombies should have their guts all blown out because if they keep yeah. eating food and the gases of decomposition would just inflate them into, like, giant bellies. Right. Hey, what they eat has to come out somewhere. Then again, if you just come up with the idea that everything is supernatural, that, you know— when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Right. Then it doesn't really matter because it's right. just supernatural. Well, yeah, that's just one one of the one more thing of you know people different people coming up with the uh, different characters you know coming up with their mm. own explanations. Yeah. 
This is when he's uh, he's got to talk his way out of it. Oh. Yep. Yeah, it's like if you see there's an evolution here in the way that Big Daddy, um, you know, he one time he takes a gun from someone, right? The next yeah. he, he he gets enraged and he presses the, the trigger and he finds out, oh, this can shoot. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, I think there's another part where a zombie's on fire and Big Daddy's going to shoot the zombie to put him out of his misery. Yeah. So that's kind of showing compassion, just like when he yeah. stomps on the head of the first zombie. Yeah, and, and uh, he, he finds a jackhammer and he's all excited about jackhammering. And then when he walks far enough that it unplugs and it doesn't work anymore, he's kind of disappointed. Huh. And he's just teaching them how to... Uh, how to Teaching shoot them how to shoot. Oh, yeah. there we go. Ugh. Yeah, but now your clip is empty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the grenade dude. Ooh. Ugh. That's great. That's a great kill. There's some really good kills. Yeah. That zombie that swings his head forward and then the head swings back and then um What's the name of the guy with the burnt face? Um, Charlie. Charlie, yeah. He kind of shoots the head through the body. That's also pretty good. Yeah. There we go. This is a big reveal. Yeah. Yeah, you're not sympathetic anymore, Cholo. Yeah. Hmm. Man, everybody just wants to leave that place. Uh, Cholo is the only one who wants to live there. Look like a... Uh, Land air missiles, land land missiles. I don't know. Yeah. Ah, he's got a little remote control that uh, controls the weapon systems. Yeah. Oof. Oh no! There goes Motown. Yep. She was from Detroit. Oh. Yeah. The, hit the, the head. Jesus Christ. The, don't shoot him 30 times in the body and then hit him in the head. Yeah. The, the, the one, the, the, the lady with the pigtails is, is a uh, pretty boy. That's a weird name. Yeah. Real friendly. Yeah. Like, oh, this is the best. What's in the bags? Money. Oh, hey, look over there. Bang. <laughs> yeah, what a it's scumbag. Just... <laughs> it's great. Like, he doesn't give a crap anymore. This is why I'm saying I'm surprised that uh, more people didn't stand up to him or already got yeah. rid of him because he's terrible. Yeah. Oh, I can hear an explosion. It's the zombies, man. Nope. Those are the stenchers. Yep. It's a pretty big, uh, it looks like there's a pretty big section of city blocks that's uh, their little domain. Yeah. And there's more buildings. I mean, I wonder, that's not the only tower in the city. I wonder what's going on with the that, other buildings, That's a right? good point. Yeah, why couldn't they take on some other buildings? 
again. It's a, you yeah, can't... you're right. They've got a whole city and probably just a few hundred people. Maybe the fenced area is smaller than we think. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the 1% thinks, that we have no right to yeah. uh, want to have a decent pay. Meanwhile, their trickle-down economy thing is just, we'll just use the money to buy more stocks for our own company. Yeah. In this case, it's just like, oh, the zombies don't have the right. Hey, they got the might, they got the right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I see what you mean. I think that Oh, you know, there's Tom Savini. Yeah. Yeah, and he's reprising his role as the 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 character from Dawn of the Dead. Oh, wow. Good kill. So, is that I, the is is that uh Dawn of the Dead uh, is it supposed to take place in Pittsburgh? Uh, I think he No, I don't think so. He just I think he just walked really far. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That, it's that, another thing you're not choice. you're not supposed to think too hard about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a nice, fun cameo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, everything's falling apart. I think uh, one quote that Clive did about zombies, he he said that um, zombies are the liberal nightmare. Here you have the masses whom you would love to love appearing at your front door with their faces falling off. And you're trying to be as hum- human as you possibly can. But they are, after all, eating the cat and the fear of mass activity of mindlessness on a national scale underlies my fear of zombies. Mm. Wise words from Clive. I think Cholo's – oh, there we go. Cholo got bit. Um, Cholo's gun, though, is pretty cool because he can always recover the dart, right? It's not like a bullet. Yeah. You'd imagine people would be using a lot more uh, bows and arrows. You can fire those several times. You can only fire a bullet once. Right. You can't pull it out of somebody and use it again. He's taking it in stride. I was like, ah, you've done it to a lot of people, but. I always wanted to see how the other half lives. (laughs) What if it's uh, living hell and torment? It's funny that he chooses to become a zombie. It's like, okay, I'm just going to yeah, gonna go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eat that meat. Get that brain. Nom. Oh, Jesus Christ. That is the best kill in the movie. Did you see that? What's that? The guy who... Zombie sticks the fingers in the guy's upper lip and then pulls all his face backwards like a. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I saw like that. Like removing yesterday. a baklava or something. Well, and there's one that the one I was thinking of when I when I mentioned of pulling people apart like taffy. There's one where they grab like one side of their hand, like you oh, know, it, no. it, and then pull their entire arm apart all the way down to the elbow. Yeah, here's the part I was talking about when Big Daddy shows compassion by killing a zombie on fire. Yeah. Definitely the smartest guy, the smartest zombie here. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a... The jackhammer, yeah. Yeah. He's all happy about that. He says, that'll help me get over there. Uh, nope. Yeah. (laughs) He still hasn't mastered the concept of electricity. Yeah.
Yeah, that's going to take you a while to do it that way, buddy. Yeah, but Dennis Hopper died prostate cancer, unfortunately. No. Oh. Died at age 74. He's been in some of, some of my favorite movies. Favorite scary movies, too. I mean, he was in this oh, movie. Oh, here we go. He's, That's oh, what I was talking look. about. Oh, it's like, I didn't even know you could yeah. make a wish. <laughs> yeah. He's been in that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I've never seen that, that one. Oh, it's a wild movie, man. You got to see that movie. It's yeah. almost black comedy in certain parts. Sorry, I just got a message from Matt. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> he said, all righty. Yeah, so that guy, we never see him again, right? He takes the Jeep and takes off, and that's the end of him. Yeah, and I could see... Now it makes more sense why John Leguizamo was like, eh, don't kill me just yet, because... He's going back into the city. He wants yeah. to confront uh, Kaufman. Yeah. That's become his um, ultimate goal now, even beyond death. Yeah. Oh, they're at the tower. Hard to believe that everybody is still there. Like, you didn't see, like, all the... I know. Radio communications and all the yeah, hear the explosions and stuff. You the, you think the first thing they do is lock themselves in their houses or in their apartments or whatever? Oh, smart! They got oh no, not so smart. I was gonna say it looks like they had uh, bulletproof glass, but yeah, it can't actually stand to uh, that huge horde of zombies. These rich people are just complete idiots. Oh yeah. It's like, I'm just sitting here, you know, trying to enjoy my leisurely lunch. And all of a sudden, zombies everywhere. Wearing my pearl necklaces and tuxedo. Yeah, it makes you question what gives them the motivation to live. When, yeah. when they just live in one building that they really can't leave. Yeah. What kind of future is that? Right. Right, yeah, they they probably think of the people down below as almost as bad as zombies, right? Oh, he took her uh the uh, nip her, uh, yeah, the yeah, the belly button ring. Yeah. So the film was released one year after the remake of Dawn of the Dead was released international to cinema. The film grossed over $40 yeah. million and is second behind Dawn of the Dead with the highest grossing revenue in the Living Dead series. The two lowest being Night of the Living Dead, 68, and Diary of the Dead, 2008. Oh. Well, yeah, but in Night of the Living Dead was, was kind of a – I mean, it, it's, it's a cl cult classic now, but it, at the time it was kind of a – they had to they had to take it around to festivals and or to uh, cinemas themselves. I think, right? Like I'm pretty sure I could squeeze between those wires. They're they're put pretty wide. Yeah. But the, I think the voltage is more than a typical. Right. Right. Yeah. Enough to set you on fire, I guess. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro said about this movie, finally someone was smart enough to realize that it was about time and gave George the tools. It should be a cause for celebration amongst all of us that Michelangelo has started another ceiling. It's really a momentous occasion. Yeah. Oh, geez. That, oh, seeing that, that zombie like smush his fingernails on the wall, just yeah. really, it's painful to watch. Oh, and you know how people say this land is my land. Roger Ebert's uh, criti uh, criti uh, review of this movie was, this land is gore land. Oh, God. That's yeah. a bad pun. That is a bad pun. Do Are there still uh, newspaper um, 
movie reviews anymore, or is that like a thing of the past now with all the blogs and stuff? And I think and there's YouTube still movie reviews. Yeah. I think there should be. Yeah, there's still newspapers. Yeah. Oh, that's great! That uh, the the yeah. tower just decapitated the guy. Yeah. I know, like, but like the classifieds are gone. I haven't bought a newspaper in ten years. Yeah, I don't Same. think. Yeah, maybe magazines, sure, but a newspaper, I don't think I've bought one in ten years. Does that woman have a clown nose or something? <laughs> it's funnier if you try to think of Dennis Hopper in this movie as being Koopa. <laughs> oh yeah. I I like the scene where he slides down and she makes this face at him like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And he's like, "What are you doing?" Oh, smush. Where It's right here. E. He he kind of slides back down the window and and the She's like, "I'm so sorry." Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you imagine how many bullets they're using up? Yeah. That, no, this part. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. It's a little awkward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the CGI blood did not age very well, though. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was looking at my Blu-ray. You know, the... the the score on this or the 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 sound is just mixed in 2.0 stereo. They didn't do sur- any kind of surround sound on it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess they did. I oh, wonder the, if there's oh, a the special features are just did. I mi- I misread it. It is in surround sound. I wonder if there's going to be um an ultra HD version of this at some point. Yeah, there's not right now. I looked for it. I didn't listen to the commentary. Did you? Did you listen to the commentary? Uh, not this time. I I have before, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't do it this time. Oh, here's the sky flowers happening yeah, again. But and, this time they're gonna look up, and Big Daddy's gonna be like, "Oh no, you don't." Yeah. And they're like, "Well, hang on, I was in the middle of something here." Yeah. No, I think they collectively just. You know. Oh yeah. Decided they were more interested in eating the people. Yeah. This dude. Roar. She's like, oh no, my shopping trip. I mean, dude, where would they even like sh- shop in stores? How would they shop in stores? Do they have to keep staffing? <laughs> I don't know. How do they get yeah. inventory in those stores? Uh, yeah. Do you just shop and at the yeah. end of the day it goes back to the store so you can shop again tomorrow? <laughs> it's just the illusion of shopping. Yeah. Or or Cholo's having to find stuff to put in the stores and Denbo. Oh, Big Daddy's getting hit. Yeah. Man, his, his butler is just a horrible character. I know. It's just, oh, no, what are you doing? It's painful to see. Yeah. So I think they were going to go on that boat that eventually goes into the – those two rivers that merge into the Ohio River. I guess the Ohio River is pretty big, huh? I don't know. All right. And Cholo, but it's it's not the Cholo that we think. Yeah. You never get reception in the garage. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. I wonder what happened to him. We don't see him get killed or anything, I don't think. Eh, probably got eaten. Yeah, I would think so. 
They probably just didn't want to put that in the in the movie because it's like, oh, here's where you get the payoff from him being like a gas station attendant, right? Ah, uh, there we go. Fill her up. Yeah. This is where I wish zombies could speak. Yeah. Be like, fill her up. I don't wish that. <laughs> that would be terrible. Yeah, try shooting your gun now, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Hmm. Get out of the car, dude. Just the slightest static spark could send that whole thing flying sky high. Yeah. Still got my money. Oh, yeah, sure. Here comes Cholo. So is Cholo dead now? I think he's dead in a second. He's dead now. He's already dead. No, You can well, see his face is already messed up. I think because he, he kind of crouches down like he's dying right here. Well, he's just being shot at like three times and he had, doesn't even flinch. He just keeps moving forward. He does. But yeah, why does he then why does he do this? It's a fake out. But zombies don't do that. Well, he does get shot, and maybe that just gave him a moment to, like, fall down, and then he gets up again. Yeah. See, he just kept moving as soon as he got up. Yeah. Well, but and look think, at his face. I mean, it could also be that now he's a zombie, right? Now he just no, died I mean, from getting no, shot. No, I mean, look at his face. His face doesn't turn like that in, like, ten seconds. But to be honest, I mean, pretty sure that... Even if you died, he wouldn't look like that decayed in uh, in just whatever time it took him to walk there. Well, it it happens in other other Romero movies. Yeah, it's like that thing kind of transforms him, right? It's yeah. Again, let's call it supernatural. Look at all the money yeah. burning. So I guess course, that's the end of Kaufman. I we're, we don't see him again. Hey, at least he didn't turn into a zombie. Yeah. I think that would be a better fate for him to be bitten than turn into a zombie. And you just yeah. see him like dragging his pants on his ankles, walking around yeah. like a zombie. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They're too late. Or so they think. Yeah. I still hear these screams. It's like, are those people yeah. still being eaten alive? Mostly, yeah. I think there are a few still alive. Right on. Let's blow them up. Oh, okay. Boom. Guess what? Sky flowers don't work, but those uh, steel flowers work pretty good. Yeah. I'm surprised that there's just like a small amount of zombies there. What happened to the rest of the yeah. horde? Isn't it a little suspicious that there's only yeah. like maybe 30 zombies there and then everybody yeah. can come out? Yeah. They were all hiding somewhere. Yep. I guess just the, the people that were too slow to react were just the first ones that got caught by the zombies and then everybody else just kind of hid. Yeah. It was, I think it was Mulligan that helped them out. But yeah, but Dead Reckoning can only take so many people. Where are all these people going to go? Yeah, who knows? There's Mulligan.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always going to be someone who's going to think that they have more right to something than you do. Yeah. So do you got uh, the results of the – oh, <laughs> do, you have, do you have the results for the poll that we did? Yeah, let's take a look. Pillsbury makes it to the end. Yeah, and that other guy did too. Yeah. There's Big Daddy. He's going to take over that place now. Okay, think, so mm, the yeah, Facebook the Facebook poll is the same as it was before. We had one hundred percent of the, all of the votes wanted us to do Evil Dead series. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm on board with that. I think that's what I voted for. Yeah, it didn't seem like it. It didn't really wasn't really clear about whether they also wanted us to continue on with other, you know, like Diary of the Dead and stuff like that. So the Twitter poll is different, though. The Twitter poll says we had uh, we had I think maybe one or one person wanted us to to stop with this one, and one person wanted us to continue on to do Twilight of the Dead, and we had a few people that wanted to do um, Diary and Survival of the Dead, and then a bunch of them wanted us to do the Evil Dead movies. So, what do you think? Uh, what's a tally then? Well, it was a total of nine votes. 44% of them wanted us to do Evil Dead series. 33% wanted us to do Diary and Survival. Uh, and then 11% wanted us to do Land, Stop with Land of the Dead. And another 11% wanted us to continue to, on to Twilight. So, so we're going to do I, Evil Dead? I Yeah, I think we should... We could, and I, I think we should definitely do Evil Dead. Chihuahuas. Yeah. Phil on the car was Chihuahua right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I'm game. Yeah, and we, and we could also do Diary of the Dead and Survival of the Dead if you want to. What do oh, you think? look. Photo, photo booth zombie. Lemon Pag and Network. And Machete oh, Zombie, yeah. Tom Savini. That's yeah. right, yeah. So what do you think about doing Diary of the Dead and, and uh, Survival of the Dead? I'm interested because I haven't seen them. So okay. it would be nice to finally complete that whole thing with the, you know, the Romero movies. I'm not sure if those are even on Blu-ray. They might only be DVD. I'm not uh, 100% sure. And I've only seen them the one time when they first came out because after that I wasn't really super excited about seeing them again. Yeah. They kind of have the direct to video feel, and and it was kind of a letdown after because I I really like Land of the Dead and the, so those were kind of a letdown after that one. So George Romero was interviewed in two thousand five, and they asked him of all the recent zombie movies, which do you like the most? And he says, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, was that it one difficult was... to get the guys from Shaun of the Dead to do a cameo in your movie. Oh man, difficult! They flipped. They sent <laughs> me a Shaun of the Dead print actually before it was released, so I watched it and I flipped for it. Call them up right away. We're sort of we've sort of been in touch ever since. They're great guys. They would have been there, hell or high water. Yep. Yeah. So I think that settles it then. We'll continue. We'll finish off the um, Living Dead series and then we'll go on to Evil Dead movies. Yeah, but, okay. But, but let's. Best of both worlds. Yeah, but let's do the original Evil Dead ones, not the remake ones, right? Okay. Because we could Sounds go good. on. We'd be going on forever if we did that. And there's the Ash versus Evil Dead TV series. And, oh, yeah. I never got into that. Yeah. Uh, not for any particular reason. I just never really. I didn't have that channel when that was playing. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do. So next up will be survival of the dead. Diary uh, of the dead. I think diary. Diary. Well, we'll know for sure, but I think it's diary of the dead. Oh, it, it'll we'll be have, on the it'll be on the show notes. 
And then Jericho Squad 77 will continue. We're just yeah. trying to – we already set up a date for that to uh, yeah to continue. And then but it, we'll, since it takes me a week to edit that, we'll probably have another episode that happens before that. Sure. Uh, we've got more news and interviews to come up. We'll have Hellraiser uh, comics to review because we just realized we never really went full depth on the uh, Boom yeah. comics, right? Yeah, and this was so. This was based on something that, um, let's see here, on our poll in the comments. Uh, um, D- uh, Dustin Vanderpool said, uh, "Do them all, and then finish the Boom series, and please revisit unused scripts for Hellraiser." movies that's yeah. my request so okay. i don't we can look into that i we, we already did a we bunch did of a, those. yeah and I'm, I'm not sure how much more there will be that we could actually get our hands on yeah i'll try to i'll try to send dustin a message with some uh, episode numbers i know we we did those with max lichter of pyramid gallery when we did yeah. i think the first or second duels of blood series yeah so I'll try to find out those episodes and uh, and send to Dustin. Thanks for the comment, Dustin. Yeah, that was fun. All right, and that's the end of the credits. Um, and this was fun to to uh, go to come back to the Living Dead movies and and Land of the Dead. And yeah. it's neat, neat to be able to watch that again. Now I'm gonna have zombie nightmares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, All right. right, you guys. Uh, hope you guys have a fun time this weekend. And thank you. So- so much for joining us for this little bit and i hope you guys have fun watching the movie and we'll catch you next time and this podcast having no beginning will have no end thank you for joining us and we hope you have subscribed you can find the clive barker podcast wherever you find audio show notes for this episode as well as news and reviews can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com the clive barker podcast or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our new Discord server. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Opening music by Ray Norrish. End credit music by Matt Furness. Thanks for listening.